as the law stands, anybody can work as a bouncer. The most important qualifications seem to be muscle, bulk, and a willingness to maintain both by regular training at places like Gordon's Gym in South London. Flicko. But to be a good bouncer, you've got to look the part. It'd be no good an eight-stone weakling standing there saying to a drunk Saturday night, out you go, we've had enough of you, or whatever. Because they'd just walk straight over you. We are what you could say horizontal champions. We never made it as boxers or wrestlers. But nevertheless, we are trained men. We all come from working class backgrounds. So therefore, we don't earn a lot of money of a day. So to get a few extra quid, we go out and we do these jobs. A bouncer's pay depends on his experience and reputation. A top London club will pay £30 a night for a professional doorman, as the more self-respecting bouncers prefer to be called. Whilst a casual chucker outer at a rough pub or dance hall may get as little as a fiver a night. People always come out with the same old nonsense. We went into a club and the bouncers set about us for nothing. And they'll always tell you that it's always for nothing. It's a load of rubbish. I've been bouncing for 15 years and I've never seen a bouncer take an unnecessary liberty with anybody. There's always people want to start trouble and it's always the innocent that get hurt. And it's our job to protect the innocent. Otherwise, you would always get the bully boys attacking the little boys, and it's our job to stop that. I think this was the worst incident I've had outside a club in Crystal Palace. I went to protect a girl. I finish up, I finish up like this. What was that, a raisin? Nobody took my part. A uh, fish knife, actually. Do you know the knife you got fish with? One of those. What? I finished up with 35 stitches here, 17 there. <laughs> Uh, the tendon's cut in my right hand. I nearly had a knife in my belly and a broken right hand. Nobody took my part. Nobody had any sympathy for me. Have you ever lost your temper? <laughs> Once now and again. When I say that, it's one twice, I should say. Once when I got done by a girl with ten stitches and the other time when I got done by a man by ten stitches and I lost my temper. And what but happened? I think I was entitled to lose my temper. What happened? I went berserk. I mean, let's face it, if you're going to get someone to hit you over the head and put ten stitches in your head simply because you've asked him to leave or asked her to leave, then I think you're entitled to lose your temper. I've known cases where people have been severely attacked in clubs and we've had to go in. And we've helped them out. And we've got no thanks at all. <coughs> but do you really see yourself doing a public service? I bloody well do, yes. The three bouncers we spoke to work at the music machine in Camden Town, a converted theatre once used for recordings of The Goon Show, and now a venue for the more avant of avant-garde pop groups. Go on, carry on that way for it, please. Security starts at the front door with a top and toe examination of prospective patrons. Cropped heads and steel-capped shoes are out. You're gone. Get outside, mate, will you? Where are you going? Where are you going? If you are a bouncer, then you are supposed to be a little bit more special than the average man in the street. You are supposed to be able to protect yourself and be just that little bit better. I'm a skinhead tonight. No, no. No skinhead tonight, cop, sorry. Well done, mate. Thank you. It's nearly midnight, and with the pubs turning out, the place is now filling to capacity. Whilst on the dance floor, the noise level is reaching Richter scale proportions. You've done bouncing as many years as we've been doing bouncing. You get a sixth sense. It's like a policeman. They can smell a crook. You can ask a chap to leave, and you can ask him as nice as pie, and he'll say, yes, thank you, good night, sorry, and go. But you always get the one who'll stand there and question it. Why? What for? Who are you? Why should I go? You know, and they start to challenge it, and you get that sixth sense that any minute he's going to hit you. And that is when I get the first punch in, to protect myself. And the idea, let's be honest, the idea 
for the public's point of view, they don't want to see trouble in no club. So the quicker and the quieter and the easier you can get these people out, the better. And if that means knocking them out, it means taking them out nice and quietly, no one sees it. The comparison of their job with that of the police is one of which bouncers are especially fond. The responsibility, the danger, the service to the public. But it's a double-edged comparison. For if bouncers are, on occasions, going to take the law into their own fists, why shouldn't they be subject to the same sort of screening and training that we demand of the police? If childminders are brought under the control of a local authority, as they now are, why shouldn't bouncers be brought under that control? Because childminders are not dealing with fags, are they? <laughs> They're minding children, we're minding fags. Well, what, what are we going to get out of being registered? We get bugger rule as bouncers now. Now, what are we going to get out of being registered? It's not what you would get out of it, it's what the public may get out of it in terms of being protected from the fringe elements in your profession. But you see, well, you get no, the this, this, Hold up, this is what I say. If society thinks bouncers are such a bad lot, ban them. Now, if you're registered, every tuppenny, hate me little thug and toe rag and drunk can come into your club, they can insult you, and when you defend yourself, you are open to prosecution. Because they can say, we went down to a club, um, John Madden, registration number, whatever, has assaulted us. Now, we go to court, the average judge, jury, they take one look at the likes of me, Graham and Tom. <coughs> we all look the part because we've got to. What chance have we got? Well, what should courts do? I think they should be a lot more sympathetic towards the people who do this type of security work. You mean that you should be regarded by the law in a different light to any other citizen? Well, I, yeah, why not? Less clearly defined is the attitude of the police to bouncers. In London, where the concentration of nightlife is greatest, there seems to be an understanding that the individual proprietor either keeps his own house in order or runs the risk of losing his licence. Now, whilst this may save the police the time-consuming annoyance of having to sort out every petty punch-up, it can also give the impression that the police condone the practice of employing untrained men, possibly with convictions for violence, to do a policing job. Back at the music machine, it's now past Can two in the morning, right clearing up time, and the bouncers are on their last tour of duty. Can you take your drinks uh, upstairs first? Can you make a move now, cock, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you go upstairs Come on, now, please? Mate? Can you move away now, mate? A bouncer's job is difficult requiring a fine balance of tact and coercion. And in a place like the music machine, it's hard to see an effective alternative to the present system, other than closing the place down altogether. Ladies, can you make a move, please? Come along. Certainly the police, hard-pressed as they already are, wouldn't want to take over, whilst the average security guard wouldn't be able to. Registration is one answer. But, quite apart from the bouncer's opposition, it would be hard to implement. Nor does the Home Office show much enthusiasm for it, saying merely that their current examination of the security industry may lead to some suggestion that will include bouncers.